There are caloric, low caloric and non caloric sweeteners. Caloric sweeteners contain monosaccharides like glucose and fructose which provide sweetness but also calories. Low caloric sweeteners like aspartame contain a lot of calories but they are much sweeter than sugar, resulting in negligible amounts of calories for the same level of sweetness. Non-caloric sweeteners are molecules which taste sweet but cannot be metabolized for energy by our body. Let's find out which caloric, non-caloric or low-caloric sweeteners are safe to consume and why we should limit their usage nonetheless. Caloric sweeteners Sugar molecules like glucose and fructose or polysaccharides are found in various plant foods. Their consumption as part of whole plant foods like fruits, vegetables, whole grains, etc. is safe, even health-promoting. Caloric sweeteners are extracted from various plant matter high in sugar molecules. These include sugar beets, sugar cane, corn, rice, agave and various fruits. These caloric sweeteners are for the most part devoid of nutrition in relation to their calorie content. There are two exceptions which we will examine at the end of this video. Non and low caloric sweeteners. The sweet taste can not only be triggered by sugar molecules, but also by various other substances, either produced chemically or extracted from plants. Some of these substances, called sugar alcohols, chemically resemble sugar molecules. Some, called glycosides, even contain tightly bound sugar molecules. But they can also be entirely different from sugar. Aspartame, for example, is made up of two amino acids, and other artificial sweeteners are random chemicals often found by chance. The effects of artificial sweeteners on our body vary greatly. Many artificial sweeteners are said to leave our body unchanged, but that does not mean that they are harmless. Risks of artificial sweeteners We won't cover the health risks of every single artificial sweetener in this video. This is not really necessary anyway. Most artificial sweeteners are not harmless. Frequent detrimental side effects include a laxative effect, triggering of migraines, insulin resistance. How can substances that leave our system unchanged cause so much trouble? Often only a fraction of the sweetener is absorbed by the small intestine and therefore a large amount comes into contact with our gut microbiome in our large intestine. It seems that artificial sweeteners can disturb our gut bacteria, which can even affect how we process food hours later. Blood sugar spikes Artificial sweeteners like aspartame, stevia and monk fruit cause insulin resistance, which results in a peculiar finding. Over a 24-hour average, drinking an artificially sweetened beverage alongside regular food results in about the same average blood sugar level as a sugar-sweetened beverage. The blood sugar spikes of the beverages themselves are as different as night and day. The sugar-sweetened beverage leads to a sharp increase and drop in blood sugar, whereas the artificially sweetened beverages have no immediate effect on the blood sugar level. One hour later, when consuming a regular meal, the artificially sweetened beverages rear their ugly heads. The blood sugar response to the regular meal is now much worse. In the end, many artificial sweeteners do not seem to have any significant advantage over sugar in terms of blood sugar and insulin control. Neither is good. But personally, I would avoid the exaggerated blood sugar spike of a regular meal caused by the artificial sweeteners at all costs. Aspartame and depression. When aspartame is digested in our guts, formaldehyde is produced, which is very toxic. This might be one of the reasons why aspartame can trigger depressive episodes in susceptible people. There are quite a few case studies about people suffering from depressive episodes or other mental problems linked to aspartame consumption. So if you consume aspartame in soda, gum, candy, sugar-free ice cream, etc. and you are susceptible to depressive disorders, it might be a good idea to cut it out of your diet, at least for a few weeks. This does not mean that you should go back to sugar-sweetened foods. A harmless artificial sweetener there is indeed a harmless artificial sweetener called erythritol. 
It's a sugar alcohol with a sweetening power of only 50 to 70% that of sugar. It is mostly absorbed by the small intestine and excreted via the urine, thus bypassing the large intestine. So if you are currently using sugar, you might give erythritol a try instead, or the healthy caloric sweeteners we will reveal later. In any case, it might be a good idea to start with small amounts in case you do experience adverse health effects like diarrhea or migraines. Psychological effects Our brains evolved linking the sweet taste, mostly from fruit, with readily available energy. It has been shown that betraying our brain by using artificial sweeteners makes it boost our appetite in revenge. Another effect, the so-called license to eat effect, lets us eat more food when we knowingly use artificial sweeteners. I'll have the burger, large fries, some ice cream and a diet soda please. I know this is an extreme example, but you get the gist. The regular usage of sugar or artificial sweeteners lets our taste buds adapt to a high level of sweetness. This will cause real food like heavily delicious sweet potato taste bland. And you might use erythritol at home, but you might still need to get your sweetness fix when on a day trip or on holidays. Healthy caloric sweeteners We mentioned two caloric sweeteners which are safe to consume and contain some nutritional value in relation to their calorie content. The antioxidant power per calorie is a useful parameter to assess the healthfulness of a food item. Metabolizing food always releases free radicals, also called oxidative stress, as does exercise and our very existence. Most caloric sweeteners provide negligible antioxidant power and they are unable to even balance out the oxidative stress they cause. Only date sugar and blackstrap molasses provide a decent amount of antioxidant power alongside vitamins and minerals and they are thus health promoting. Both blackstrap molasses and date sugar are still quite calorie dense, they should be used sparingly, but within the realm of caloric sweeteners, they are by far the best choice. Sweet summary. Now we know that date sugar, blackstrap molasses and erythritol are the best choices when it comes to sweeteners. If you are currently using sugar in your baked goods or in your coffee, you might improve your health by switching to these sweeteners. Let us know if you want to learn more about how to use these sweeteners. Of course, if you are not using any sugar, there is no need for these sweeteners either. In any case, down-regulating our sweet taste can have multiple advantages. Formerly bland food might taste better and we are more likely to choose foods lower in calorie density which can help our waistline. Thanks for watching our video. If you have experience with using date sugar, blackstrap molasses or erythritol, let us know in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. See you next week!